I don't know how many times we're going to say no lead is safe in the NBA before the Celtics realize that no lead is safe in the NBA. Plus, they play way too slow. I'm going to talk about it right now on the Locked On Celtics podcast. Think of blockbuster bread. It's holiday season. Drop Drew in the mix. And three from KT. No, we not on the next. Watch a competition like Al on Giannis. Juice and Big Zeus still be town's finest. Been a great team going up in the rafters. Watch the seeds gaining locked on after. Corrales on the breakdown. Clutch like a tip from D. White on the breakdown. John on the mic document and domination. Matter pen of back bay. It's all seeds nation. Rain and Jays. How we started raising business. How we finished. Locked on. Celtics pod, home of the hey there, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics Podcast, right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day, and I got you covered every single day, Monday through Friday, with a free, fresh podcast that's dropped directly to your device, even on nights like this, where the Celtics just kicked away a 30-point lead. But make sure you subscribe, because I'll be talking about that. I talk about games they play in the weekends in bonus podcasts. So plenty to talk about here on the Lockdown Celtics podcast. Subscribe, get into the YouTube page, uh, get into the comment section. Let me know what you think. Today, the Celtics, I'm talking about a 120 to 118 loss to the Atlanta Hawks. Today's show is brought to you by Prize Picks. The easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports, go to prizepicks.com slash LockdownNBA. Use the code LockdownNBA, all lowercase, for a first deposit match up to $100. Um, Celtics led this one by 30 at one point. It was 68-38 to 38 in the second quarter. Four minutes to go, four and change to go. Four, 423, I want to say. 68 to 38. The Celtics looked amazing. The Hawks looked awful. They looked horrible. It was one of the biggest disparities between the two teams that I've seen in an NBA game in a long time. So it made sense at that point to say this game's over, right? It felt like that game was over. It didn't look like Atlanta had anything left. It didn't think, it, I say anything left. It, they didn't have anything to begin with. There was no reason to believe that the Hawks would figure this out. And yet, they did. Because no lead is safe in the NBA. The ESPN just did a whole thing on... 20, 20 point leads and how they it's like 50 like in the in the mid 50s now of teams that were up by 20 and the lead goes away did I introduce myself by the way for those of you who don't know I'm John Corrales uh former player once upon a time now I cover the Celtics for Boston Sports Journal you do all that did I do all that stuff did I forget did I blow it like the Celtics did anyway if, if a fourth quarter lead, a 20-point lead, is not safe, if a lead going into the fourth quarter, up 20, is not safe, why would a 30-point lead in the second quarter be safe? If 12 minutes is enough time for 20 points to be erased, why wouldn't 20, almost 29 minutes be enough time for 30 points to be erased? Doesn't make any sense. Why would a team say, oh, we've got this, and never get it back. Like, I understand 68 to 38 that you say, ah, we got it, no problem. But why can't you get it back? Why can't the Celtics get it back? This is the most confounding thing. The Hawks got hot, and I said before the game, I wrote it on Boston Sports Journal in my preview. The Hawks are a bad defensive team that can hit a ton of shots. And if you're not careful, it could be a 105 to 100 score after three. And basically saying, 
the Hawks are capable of putting up 100 points in three quarters. And that's what they did. They put up 98 points in quarters two, three, and four. They're completely capable of doing that. So shout out to the Hawks for hitting a bunch of shots. I mean, they they had to make the shots in order to complete this comeback. They shot 18 of 36, so 50% from three. And over the course of the second half, Boston made one three-pointer. They were one of 15 in the second half. The Hawks were 11 of 19. So this is what the Hawks are capable of doing. They have Bogdan Bogdanovich, who can hit shots. They have DeJounte Murray, who's a good player. They have DeAndre Hunter. He can get hot. This kid Krejci gets hot. They have guys on the team capable of hitting three-pointers. So, okay, they they hit a few three-pointers. The Celtics were messing around with the lead. It, it started early in the second quarter. Jason Tatum, I remarked on Twitter that the Celtics scored. And at that point, it was like a joke. I was making a joke at that time. The Celtics scored. They ran a whole offensive set. They ended up getting a Luke Cornett layup. And then the entire time watching on TV, I didn't see Jason Tatum in the frame for a single second of it. He just kind of hung around way up by the logo. And the Celtics ran four on five, and they still scored. That's how easily things were going for them. But the Celtics relaxed. They got up 68 to 38. Okay, so the Hawks made a run. They cut it to 18 heading into the half. To me, that felt like Joe Mazzula at halftime, get the guys together, be like, hey, look, man, you guys see what happens here when you take your foot off the gas and you you give them life. So you got to come out here at the beginning of the third quarter and take away their life. You got to take it away. So 18, we got to get this thing back up to 30. Now, I know he doesn't say that stuff. He doesn't think that way. But there had to be some sort of emphasis like, okay, guys, we understand what happened here. Look at how we did well in the first quarter, 44 to 22, first quarter double up. Look how well we played and we succeeded. Look what we did in the second quarter when we started to give up that run to, to lose 12 points off the lead. Look what we did wrong. Okay. Third quarter, got to come out strong and do the things that we're doing in the first quarter. And they didn't do it. That run extended to a 30 to, uh, 30 to seven run. So all of a sudden it was a single digit game. And once, once you get to that point, it's hard to shut that water off, but the Celtics had another chance. They made another run third quarter, get it up to 11. Al Horford looks over at the Hawks bench, says, you guys need a timeout. They called a timeout and the Hawks responded. The Celtics didn't turn around and pile it back on. They relaxed again. And again, credit to the Hawks. The Hawks played well and the Celtics couldn't, didn't get it back. But the Celtics had multiple opportunities down the stretch. Once again, now listen, it's obviously frustrating for them to lose, but the, the loss doesn't matter in and of itself. I am not upset at the fact that I'm not upset that they, they blew the lead. It's, it is like, guys, come on, be serious. But okay, it happens. You blew a lead, it happens. Like I said at the top, you if if a 20 point lead is not safe in the fourth quarter, then a 30 point lead at you know in the second quarter is definitely not safe. You gotta recognize that. Okay, fine. It happens, it happens. Not a big deal. The Celtics, by the way, have already clinched the East. So they didn't even need to to win to clinch the East. It's clinched. It's done. They are the number one seed. You'd like to wrap up the NBA overall seed, but whatever. It's gonna happen at some point. This isn't, uh, oh my God, they're not going to win a championship because of this. No, I don't care about that. I don't care that they lost. I don't really care that they blew a 30-point lead. What I care about is that the fourth quarter was so 
brutally slow that the Celtics didn't, they got away from the stuff that worked. Once again, I've got stats to show how the Celtics are taking this playing slow to extremes. And this is the most troubling part about this loss. It's it, the only really troubling part about this loss is how slow they play and how they stop giving themselves the best chance to win in these close games. I'll talk about that in just a second. Today's show is brought to you by Prize Picks. It's the number one fantasy sports app. Over 3 million members on that app playing daily fantasy sports. And you don't play against a single one of them because you're playing against projections. They set the numbers. You pick more, you pick less. If you are correct, you win. You win enough of those and you can multiply your money. Put down 10 bucks. You can multiply it two, three, four times, 10 times, maybe even a hundred times now that it's demon time on prize picks. Go to prizepicks.com. Sign up at prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA. Check it out. The boxes have either red demons or green goblins. Those set the payouts to a different level. You can win up to a hundred times your money with as few as four correct picks. You turn 10 bucks into a thousand, a hundred times your money with as few as four correct picks using those demon and goblin squares. So go check it out. When you win, the quick the, the withdrawals are super quick. The gameplay is easy. A gigantic, enormous, massive selection of players and entry types. You can do it in less than 60 seconds. It's super, super easy. I've had people come up to me at the garden saying, thank you for turning me on to prize picks. So go check it out. Prizepicks.com slash lockdown NBA. The code is lockdown NBA, all lowercase. You get a first deposit match up to $100. So you win right away because they match your first deposit up to $100. Prizepicks.com slash lockdown NBA. You can turn 10 bucks into a thousand with those red goblins, uh, red demons, and green goblins. So go check it out. Prizepicks.com slash lockdown NBA. Prize picks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Thank you for making Lockdown Celtics your first listen every day. Go check out Lockdown Sports Today, free 24 7 sports streaming channel. Forget Fox Sports. Forget ESPN and all the yelling and fake arguments. Turn on Locked On Sports today, 24-7 on YouTube, or it's on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. So I think the Celtics' biggest problem here is that they play so damn slow at the end of games and I've talked about this in the podcast before. They play so slow that they're they're killing their chances. We know that the Celtics, and what's frustrating about this team is this is when they lose, this is how they lose. And it's outlier stuff. So it's not, it really is not. This is not a podcast. It's like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if these guys have it. Oh, I don't know if they've got it in them. No, they do. They do. But they have to fix this one thing. It's like the last thing that you have to fix. They play so slow in fourth quarters. So Jason Tatum, with eight and a half to go in the game, the Hawks just took a lead, right? It's like 102-101, and he's walking the ball up the floor. No pressure, no resistance. He's just walking the ball up the floor. And he's going so slow that he just takes an eight-second violation. And he started to argue it, and he, he was arguing it. And it's very clear. It's clear as day. This, it showed 16, 15, and you weren't even over half court yet. It was the most – it triggered something in me because it's like, how can you, the, the team, they just took a one point lead. It's now you're losing. It's eight and a half to go. What are you slowing the game down for at this point? Run your offense, bring the ball up the floor, challenge them, play with some pace, make a bad defensive team, make bad defensive decisions. But no, he walks the ball up the floor and takes an eight-second violation with no pressure. It blew my mind. Absolutely blew my mind. 
because it shows that they don't understand what their last remaining huge problem really is. They they will say after the game, we, we have to grab more rebounds. Absolutely. The offensive rebounds down the stretch, killers. And by the way, DeAndre Hunter's three-pointer up one with 11 seconds to go was one of the dumbest decisions you can make on a basketball court. The fact that it went in erases what, uh, what should be a lot of scorn and ridicule for DeAndre Hunter. He got lucky here. That was a bad decision, but it worked because it went in. But anyway, the offensive, yes, should they rebound more? Yeah, should they defend? They gave up 98 points over the last three quarters. Yeah, you got to defend better. After the game, Joe Missoula and everybody else will talk about the margins, which is absolutely true. And this is this is where I think there there's a problem. They are accurate in saying we got to be better at the margins. We got the turnovers, live ball turnovers. Their points off of turnovers. Clean this up. Clean that up. Clean that up. Clean that up. And all of a sudden, you know, you're not even in this situation. And that's true. That's all true. And you can sit there and focus on. Clean this up, clean that up, clean that up, clean that up. Four things and the margins. And yeah, that that 10-point swing, 15-point swing, and you win this game, and it's pretty easy. But that's not the only thing they should be focusing on because they they will be in this situation again. And they will have to figure out a way to close out a tight game again. And maybe it'll be winning all of the margins and still being in a tight game. What they cannot do, I'm begging them, pleading with the Celtics, please understand that you play too slow down the stretch. The numbers tell us that you play too slow down the stretch. Okay, first quarter, they put up a, a, a graphic in the Pistons game. Celtics first quarter, points, defensive field goal percentage, three-point field goal, scoring margin, offensive rating, defensive rating, net rating, effective field goal percentage. First, 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 first. They're the best first quarter team in history. The Celtics in the, in the uh, first quarter play at a pace that's 102.03. That is the approximation of how many possessions playing with at that pace that they're playing. Their pace number of 102.3 is the number of possessions they would make they would have over 48 minutes. In the fourth quarter, now that's a first quarter number. In the fourth quarter, that drops to 93.2. They lose 93.92. I'm sorry. So we'll say 94. So it drops by eight. We'll round up. Okay, first quarter numbers. The second best offense in the league. Boston's the best. Second best offense in the league, Pacers. Theirs drops from 104.2 to 100.2, basically. So theirs drops by four. The Bucks are the third best offense in the league. They go from 103.24 to 99.41. Basically drop by four. The Clippers drop by uh, three, basically. This, the the Thunder, they're the fifth best offense. They go from uh, 101.3 to 97 points. So that's another four, about. So the Celtics drop by eight. The pace for the top offenses in the league drops by about four. So that's, that's the natural slow down. Every fourth quarter slows down some. And the offenses, the pace generally drops around three or four. The Celtics drop by eight. They they go twice as slow. They drop by twice as much, however you want to characterize it. They go the, the gap between their best in the first quarter and their slowest in the fourth quarter is twice as big as all the other big-time offenses in the league. That's not sustained. You cannot do that because you get too far away from what you're doing. 
And by the way, the top six fourth quarter offenses, Bucks, who I mentioned, Clippers, Pacers, Thunder, Bulls, and then the Celtics. And the Bulls pace drops by two. So all of these teams that are good offenses that don't wander too far away from what they normally are, they are good fourth quarter offenses as well. The Celtics, still good, still sixth, but you go from one to six, all these other teams are like two, three, four, five, and they still hang around two, three, four, five. Boston goes from here to down here. They play too slow. It bogs things down. You take away your options. There was no Derek White. There was no Drew Holiday. So that hinders things for sure. However, it doesn't matter who they have on the floor. It doesn't matter. Even if Tatum or Brown take all of the shots, none of that stuff matters. As long as they play with pace, that gives you, that gives them the offensive options. That gives them the opportunity to bend and break a defense. When you pass and move and cut and screen, you get baskets. We've seen it. I've talked about this a dozen times on this podcast because in the dozen of losses uh, or so that they've had, this has been the story. Please, Boston Celtics, understand that, yeah, I get it that you're going to play slower, but you're grinding these games to a halt and and you're still turning the ball over and you're just watching Tatum and, and Jalen ISO and it's not working. Move the ball, move yourselves, run some offense and you'll be fine. Some of this was just make miss stuff. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about some other players here in just a second. Today's show is brought to you by BetterHelp. Now, BetterHelp can help you uh, get past some things, get you some, get some stuff off your chest, like I've been doing. This has been a little bit of a therapeutic thing for me because I just can't stand watching bad basketball. A good team playing bad basketball. Sometimes you just need to get something off of your chest, and it might be a little trivial, but those trivial things pile up. BetterHelp can actually help you start this process of getting things off your chest and working through some lesser things, some more serious things. Therapy is helpful. I have gone through it myself. I've uh, benefited from therapy. And I know the two biggest obstacles to therapy are finding a therapist and sticking with a therapist. BetterHelp is all done online. So it's designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. Because it's online, you're not limited to proximity offices in your area, you can find a therapist after you fill out a quick questionnaire and they they match you with a licensed therapist. And if you don't click, now you're not sitting there like, well, it took me all, all this time to find somebody. You can just switch. They can get you another licensed therapist right there on BetterHelp. BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com. And you sign up here at BetterHelp.com slash NBA, and you get uh, up to, you get 10 months, 10% 10% off your first month. Betterhelp.com slash lockdown NBA. Betterhelp, H E L P.com slash lockdown NBA. This is your way to get into therapy. And I would suggest you do it at betterhelp.com slash lockdown NBA. Thank you for making Lockdown Celtics your first listen every day. Check out Lockdown NBA. I host on Wednesdays with Jake Madison of Lockdown Pelicans. And we've got rotating hosts all week. It's a great show. Great to cover the great way to cover the league. Get caught up on all the big stories there on Locked On NBA. Come join me. We'll talk about the whole league. So, look, and I want to reiterate here as I'm as I'm talking about this stuff. This is like the last thing that the Celtics need to get past to basically lock this up to make me feel like. A hundred percent sure that they are going to win this championship. And I feel like 99% sure that they're going to win this championship, but it's this late game stuff. It's, it's the fact that they slow it down so much and that they get away from what they normally do so much. That's, that's where I'm, I'm, this whole thing is because 
You'll notice I'm not really breaking down like the strategy of the game or anything like that. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. The Celtics have clinched. Uh, it was interesting that they went big. They started out and then went big with Tatum and Brown and Hauser with Porzingis and Horford. Interesting lineup. That could be a lineup that they go to. That could be, they could have started with what would be a closing lineup, right? Like if you aren't, if, 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 the other team is too big for, uh, for the, you know, maybe you don't want to throw Derek White out there against a bigger guard. I don't know what the matchup would be, but let's just say you can go with this big lineup. If you want to go super big, this is an option, right? If if Holiday sprains an ankle or something like that, there there's all of these different possibilities with lineups and stuff. So this could be a lineup that you see at some point in a fourth quarter. You know, you got length defensively, and it looked looked pretty good. It the, puts the ball in Tatum's hand a ton, which I have, I'm on record as saying I don't want it in his hands that much to start possessions. I would love to see more of these late game possessions. And again, no white, no holiday, so I'm not getting I'm not getting too worked up about the fourth quarter execution, the plays specifically that they ran, although. I do want to see, like, okay, so it starts, the, the ball starts in Tatum's hands. Why couldn't they have gone to Porzingis? Where was Porzingis down the stretch? Like, that's, you got Porzingis for a reason. Right, Brad Stevens brought him in so he can post up a bunch in the fourth quarter. So when it's like dribble, 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 and it's not going anywhere, well, where's Porzingis? Dump it into him. Why can't he finish something down, you know, on, on the post? Where was he? Where was that? So, I mean, it's those little things. But the big lineup was was interesting, and, and who knows when we'll see that again, if we'll see that again. But it's an opportunity to, to throw those experimental lineups out there, and maybe you see something that you like. I mean, obviously the first quarter worked well. I'm not going to get too worked up about that either because it was against the Hawks, and when the Hawks were playing so bad in the first quarter – they, honestly, when it when it got to 68-38, I was sitting there saying, what the hell am I going to talk about? What the hell am I going to write about? Because this is like, there at that point, there was literally nothing. To tell you. This was getting way out of hand. So I guess in a weird way, thanks Celtics for basically a meaningless loss that turns into something meaningful because of that, that slowdown thing. But, uh, and I, I can write off a lot of this as just they they let the Hawks get so hot from three that when you get outscored in the fourth quarter or in the second half by 30 from the three-point line, the Celtics shot 46 shots, they made 20. The Hawks made 23 of 40, so it wasn't that big a difference. There's only a four free throw difference, so it, it shouldn't have been a, a, a huge disparity, but – the the Celtics got outscored by, um, what was it? They they got outscored by forty, uh, yeah, by twenty, because of the three point disparity. So the Celtics were one of fifteen in the in the second half. There's a little bit of make miss happening there for sure. So I'm not gonna again. So I'm not I'm not getting too worked up about it, uh, but. There, there are certainly things they could have done better. Uh, good to see Jaden Springer out, Springer out there. I thought he had a, an important contribution uh, defensively. You could see exactly what he is capable of doing defensively, and I think that's what you see in 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 him. There is is what Brad saw in him, and you know maybe in a couple of years, whatever the uh, Drew Holiday extension ends up being, if it's a two year thing or a three year thing. Somewhere towards the end of that, Springer has the possibility of coming in and kind of sliding into that role to some degree. I mean, he's not, he's not going to be as good as, as Holiday, but can he make up uh, some of the shooting? Can he get to the can he get his jump shot down over the over the next two three years and and become a three and D type of guy? Uh, the D is there. the The defense is there. He is a, a, an NBA level defender. And if he can, you know, if he gets that reputation, uh, builds that reputation, some of the ticky tack files that he gets 
uh, those, those will go away. Um, overall, like aside from that fourth quarter, just things sliding to into molasses, uh, I thought Tatum and Brown did a good job earlier in the game. I mean, they scored, they combined for 71 points. Uh, I thought Jalen hit, hit some big shots in the fourth quarter. Uh, overall, I thought they played okay. It's just down the stretch, they played like, you know, it, it just, I'm not going to, I'm not even going to rehash it. Um, Peyton Pritchard in the third quarter was really good. I thought he was going to save the game. Honestly, I thought he saved the game in the third quarter, and I, the Celtics just could never build on what he was doing. Uh, Sam Hauser. Had a rough shooting night, two of 10. I had done a whole big breakdown on Boston Sports Journal about how he gets his three-pointers and all of that stuff. And, of course, if I had believed in jinxes, if I believe in jinxes, uh, I might have thought, like, geez, I jinxed that kid. But, uh, no, he just had a bad shooting night. Uh, tough night for him. Uh, what else happened? O'Shea Brissett, I, if he had caught that putback, put back attempt in the second quarter, maybe third quarter, um, third quarter, I think where, Oh my God, he, he jumped like he would have, he, I think he jumped like over three people. Uh, that would have been the best dunk we've seen. All Like if he had finished that dunk, it would have been challenging for dunk of the year. Um, that's, that's basically it. That's basically it from this game. I, I don't know if the Celtics are going to get this. I don't know if they're going to figure out their fourth quarter thing because if they if they don't understand that they play too slow, then that's just going to be a problem. If they just think this is how you're supposed to play and they don't change that, then, then we will just have to get used to being worried in these close games. Uh, it's the answer for Boston might just end up being don't play close games. Like that's just going to have to be where this lands. If they don't fix the the pace of play thing, because if they can't, if they slow it down so much that they get so far away from what they do, then that, that's just, it's going to be hard to win those games. So the answer might just have to be don't, don't get down or don't don't be within five, six points in the fourth quarter. Just keep it to like eight or ten. If you can clean up those margins and just win by eight or ten, then like that's that that's gonna be how you win a championship. I would prefer that they also figure out how to win these two point games, but they're it's I'm starting to lose a little bit of faith in their ability to diagnose the pace of play as the primary issue. So hopefully that changes. It's got to change. It's got to change. So we'll see They They'll, they'll smoke Atlanta on Thursday. That's going to be a bloodbath. Like they, they might come out and be like, you know what? We blew it. We understand Tatum afterwards said we effed up this game. They'll come out. They'll, they'll put up another 30 point lead in the first half and they'll double it and have their biggest win of the season. And we're all going to forget. We're all going to forget that loss. It's not going to matter in the grand scheme of things. I know it's not going to matter in the grand scheme of things, not the loss anyway, because they'll whip off another seven-game winning streak, and that's going to be it. Like, that, it doesn't matter. But the pace of play does. The pace of play does. That's the one thing from this game that matters, the pace of play. They have to play with good pace in the fourth quarter. I'm repeating myself over and over and over again. Because they keep repeating that one mistake. I'll be here all week. Uh, I will be podcasting later in the week from New Orleans. Because I never miss a trip to down, down to New Orleans. So I'll be going down there to watch the Celtics in New Orleans. That is going to be a fun game. Obviously, podcasts throughout the week until then. So I will be podcasting every day this week. Except for Friday night because they are off on Friday. So that's going to be my one podcast over two weeks. I'm doing 13 and 14 days. That's going to be my one day off. So, and I'm going to be in New Orleans for it. So uh, if I survive that Friday, I'll be back for you on that Saturday. So make sure you're subscribed wherever you get your podcasts. Watch the show on YouTube. Get into the comment section. Let me know what you think. Am I right? Am I wrong? 
And then share the podcast, spread the word, tell your friends that they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast here in the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day.